back with another Monster High redesign. Last time we took a look at Howleen and Claudine, and now we get to do Claude. I tried to pair up characters that make sense for these videos, and I figured who better to draw alongside him than Draculaura. And I've got some opinions about her. With a little spoiler warning for the Monster High reboot, my name is Teddy and I'm gonna do some drawings now. I'm really curious to hear if Claude is a favorite character for any of you. I feel like despite actually being a pretty cool guy and showing up in a lot of stories, He's just never been interesting enough to not always be overshadowed by the other characters. Even just looking at the other werewolves, I like him, but he's just nowhere near as cool to me as Howleen or Claudine. However, I like what they did with him in the reboot a lot. I still feel kind of weird about the grand overarching story that they're giving the reboot. I'm kind of worried it's going to feel a little cliche, but as you guys know, I'm a big fan of lore, so it continues to grow on me, and I just, I really hope it's going to be good. Anyways, <laughs> I like the way that they used the disappearance of Selena, Claudine's mom in this version, to introduce her son. I talked last video about how I think it makes sense that they had to have Claudine be an only child when the story begins, since her whole thing is that she felt like a loner in the human world and had to discover where she belonged. But they already had Howling as an unrelated werewolf, so it would have been kind of lame to just do the same thing again with Claude, and I'm really glad that they didn't, especially because I no longer should Claudine and Draculaura in Gen 3, so we still get a bit of intrigue in Claude dating his sister's best friend, even if the drama isn't as potent. So if you don't know, in Gen 3, Claudine's mom, Selena, has been missing for years because she was trapped in a realm called Behem. Turns out, shortly before she disappeared, she got pregnant with what would have been Claudine's little brother. I say would have been because time moves slightly faster in this alternate realm. So when Claude makes it to Monster High, he's physically older than Claudine. But you're too old to be my little brother. Technically, I'm your older brother because I'm 16. Time passes differently there. I really like this for a lot of reasons. I think it's a good way for our established characters to get more information about their mission, saving Claudine's mom, without them fully succeeding too early. And I just think the dynamic he has with his sister is nice. I like how excited she is to have him in her life. Another thing I think is interesting is their names. In the original, I did think it was odd that their names were so similar. Honestly, it was like their parents, Clark and Harriet, sort of just ran out of puns to name their children with, and by that I mean the writers did. But by having Claude be born after Selena gets sent to Behem, it adds a layer of depth to their similar names. By the time she was giving birth all alone in this dangerous world, Selena probably didn't think she was ever going home or seeing her family again. When her son was born, she named him after his sister, thinking the two would likely never meet. It turns something that always bothered me into something tragically heartwarming. In this redesign, I imagine him as still having pretty much the same story, but I changed his personality a bit. Having lived his whole life in Behem, the only person he would have known is his mother, so I want him to come across as quite shy. I imagine Behem to be similar to a post-apocalyptic kind of setting. It's filled with terrifying beasts. One where the world is an unforgiving wasteland from a civilization point of view, but also where nature is untamed and thriving. I think there has to be other sentient, I guess sapient life forms probably in Behem because Claude does talk about there being like certain sayings or customs that are part of the culture there. I mean, you wouldn't ask an aquatic arachno squid to start walking on land. <laughs> That's a behem expression for be yourself. But I also imagine that populations aren't very large. Does that make sense? So like, I'm sure he's met people other than his mom, but he just probably didn't meet a lot or they were hostile or things like that. You know what I mean? It's like a, like a zombie apocalypse kind of setting. <laughs> Can't trust nobody. And that kind of life is what Claude is accustomed to. I knew I wanted him to have massive pockets. I think having come from such a perilous life, he would want to be able to carry every precaution he could need with him at all times. It could be like a fun running gag that Claude always has whatever you need at the bottom of one of his many pockets, like snacks, medical supplies, extra pens and pencils and earbuds and stuff like that, but also just the most random things that people ask for that aren't incredibly
incredibly plot relevant, you know what I mean? Like they're not gonna find talismans in there. You ask and he just fiddles around in all his pockets and pulls out the exact specific thing you need. I think it would be funny. Seeing his confidence grow as he gets more used to being around people and seeing him make friends of his own other than his sister would be really nice. In the show, I'm pretty sure he's roommates with Deuce and Manny. Debating redesigning them, I'm not sure. But I think that's a really good idea. Like, I want to see Claude be a fully fledged character, so he needs to be more than just Claudine's brother and Draculaura's boyfriend. Speaking of being Draculaura's boyfriend, I mentioned earlier that I like their Gen 3 versions as a couple, and for these redesigns, I'm going with them dating too. I mean, of course. I like the way that their relationship is progressing slowly, very gradually. Like, the show had them in situations where they happened to be paired up together and it made sense, and the more that they hang out, the more that their feelings seem to be developing. It's cute. I really like it. And it's cute that Claude is such a mama's boy and Draculaura is a daddy's girl. <laughs> I think this werewolf design is the wolfiest out of all of them so far, which I did not mean to do. Oops. But it's, I'm, I don't know, I kind of am growing to like it. He's the same species as Claudine, a gray wolf, but his coat is a bit of a different color than hers just to have some variety. Her fur is very brown, while he leans much more cool toned. I played with his colors a lot, wanting to come up with something that I feel will pair nicely with Draculaura's design that you'll see in a bit. I didn't want to make him too colorful since her palette is so strong and I was worried about them clashing like I feel like they kind of do in general. Gen 1. Not as much in Gen 3, but I feel like they could still match more. She's just so pink. His Gen 3 look has a lot of teal and purple, but Claude has been associated with teal the longest, I think, so that's the one I wanted to give him as a pop of color in an outfit that is mostly neutrals. <laughs> the wiki even says it's his favorite color. When I was trying to come up with a style for him, I was looking at a lot of tactical wear and clothing you would see in an apocalypse video game or something like that, since it would be what he wore in Behem. I like the jacket they gave him in Gen 3, and so I did kind of incorporate it in a more toned down way as this bomber jacket, which I then wanted to add interesting pieces alongside. He's got a tighter high neck top underneath this thing that's like <laughs> kind of just the front of a shirt. I don't really know what to call it, but it was a garment that I saw and I just thought it would be a perfect inclusion for him. I really wanted to use it. He's also got sandals. I wanted his shoes to be something that he could have possibly made himself with sewing being sort of a hobby for him and something he has in common with Claudine. And I thought maybe these would be a way to do that. A simpler project than closed toed shoes. I don't know if that makes sense. I've tried to make shoes for cosplays and it's so hard. <laughs> And he is a teenage boy, and teenage boys love their fanny packs right now. <laughs> Specifically in this way, I see it all the time, and I knew it was definitely where I wanted that pop of color to be. You'll see me also putting the whole thing in black and white a few times. Since he has so many neutrals in this look, I really wanted to be sure that they would be distinct from each other. So I had to make sure the values were far enough apart. I know this Claude is really different from the original, both Gen 1 and Gen 3, but that's the fun of a redesign. <laughs> Plus, I feel like Claude got changed a lot. A lot of his aesthetics felt so different from each other, especially like in Gen 1 when he goes from being sort of a jock, but also this design reminds me of Ryan from High School Musical. It might just be the hat, but tell me this guy doesn't look like a thespian. I really like him with longer hair too. <laughs> he probably wasn't getting regular haircuts in Behem, right? But also since he's more wolfy in the face, he doesn't have facial hair anymore. He's just covered in fur. And I think the longer hair makes him look a little older, a little more like he's in his late teens. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this design. I think I captured the sweetie pie guy essence that I wanted him to have. And even though I'm not quite as confident about drawing anthro characters as I would like to be, still, I'm not mad at it, you know? I didn't expose his teeth like I did for the other werewolves in the effort of having him seem a little more of a gentle soul. But fret not, because his girlfriend has enough fat for the both of them.
Drac you, Laura, daughter of Dracula. Biologically this time. Did you know that Gen 1 Draculaura is adopted? Apparently she was from the Roman Empire, born in like the 400s. Dracula took in her pregnant mother, Camilla, after her husband was killed in battle, and after Draculaura was born, they even fell in love, only for Camilla to die to a sickness. After this, Draculaura is turned into a vampire by her adoptive father to prevent her from suffering the same fate. Is it just me or does she have the most extensive backstory in Monster High? I don't know if that's true, but it definitely feels like it. I really like OG Draculaura. She's so unique and one of the most iconic characters in Monster High. Like her design is just super solid. It's the kind of design where you see black and pink streaked hair and you're like, that's Draculaura's hair. I love her personality, both her strengths and weaknesses. She's super energetic and perky and girly, but sometimes her emotions get away from her. I love her little pink Electra Heart beauty mark too. She just exemplifies the archetype of quirky cute teenage girl that I loved so much as a kid growing up in the 2000s. I don't like her reboot. It's kind of hard to pin down, but I don't really like Gen 3 Draculaura. I don't hate her. I just don't really like her. Maybe over time she'll grow on me more, but as of now she's like a rich overachiever who gets everything she wants and doesn't face consequences. Obviously that's oversimplifying it, and it's not her whole character, but I think it's the main issue I have. She practices witchcraft, which is forbidden for monsters to do. We don't really know why right now, just that it's a human thing and human things are bad in the monster world. But like, why is it a human thing? I don't know. I think it's an allegory for something or it's supposed to be one, but I don't know what. Is it for neurodivergence? Because we have characters that pretty explicitly are neurodivergent. We also have characters that are non-binary and queer in other ways. There are a lot of characters that are part of different marginalized communities and I mean, all of them are monsters. They literally live in a hidden world because they aren't accepted by humankind. So what is her, what is the witchcraft supposed to? I just, it feels ham-fisted. I don't know, it's just, a, I don't really like it. I don't know. I really hope it gets like more lore significance at some point that validates its existence. But for now, it just kind of feels like they realized Draculaura was too perfect and they needed to give her something to make her interesting, which is wild because she's Draculaura. They started off with such a fun character and they made her boring. I know I sound harsh, but it's because I really like the show. They made a lot of bold changes that I think are really creative and positively impact the story they want to tell, but this is just not one of them. It feels not thought out enough. I don't know, honestly, the witch stuff was over with pretty fast anyways, which is good because obviously I didn't care for it, but also there's kind of no impact to her secret being revealed. There's no repercussions with family or school or anything. And I get that it's nice that she was worried about being accepted and of course her dad still loves her and of course it's good she didn't get expelled, right? And I'm sure it's comforting to a lot of kids being accepted for something that she thought made her different. But we have lots of that in the story and from a storytelling perspective, it feels like there's just no point to making witchcraft forbidden. I hope that makes sense. I don't hate the witchcraft entirely. It's just, why is it forbidden? Ugh, ugh. There's one episode where we get Gulia's perspective about Draculaura having the top spot on the school leaderboard thingy, and she doesn't understand how she can do everything she does. How is Draculaura so fast? Only to find out that she's straight up cheating. Draculaura literally stops time with witch stuff. Almost used up all my time stopping potion getting everything done tonight. This is not treated as anything out of the ordinary by the show. It's just a thing that she does that gives her a huge advantage over everyone else in so many different ways. Draculaura is a witch. That's so cool and so unfair. I can't compete with that. But don't worry about it. We're focusing on Gulia's screw up right now. I also don't really like her her new design. I'm sorry, it's not her. I just don't like the outfit. <laughs> this complaint is a lot less justified. <laughs> it's just my personal feelings. I think the split dye is cute and I'm a big fan of split dye hair in general, but I think I still prefer the chunky streaks for her. They could have at least done pigtails though. God, I miss her pigtails. In season two, they gave her a ponytail for her beach look and it's so cute. I guess I just don't like her hair down. Don't like the hat either. <sighs> I don't 
want to complain about her this much. I want to like the character. I just feel like compared to the other main ghouls in the reboot, she sticks out as a pretty weak update. <laughs> okay, let's talk about what I did to her. And if you're enjoying this video, drop a like, <laughs> maybe subscribe. I wanted to bring back in her alternative style. I love the mix of sweet girly things and more gothic elements. So I tried to do something along those lines. A lot of people say that she's pastel goth, but when I think of pastel goth, I think of this and that is not what I was imagining for her. I want her outfit to show her romantic side. I made her hair really long since she's been growing it out for centuries and I'm really happy with how it came out. I feel like I got some nice shapes in there. In her new outfit, she has knee-high socks and Mary Janes and I don't hate it. So I sort of just reinterpreted them into tights and Mary Janes with a bit more of a platform and some ruffles. It's subtle, but I like how the two dots on her shoes are like a vampire bite. I gave her this dress that I guess you could call a chemise and a short sleeve bolero with a bat wing shaped collar. I was excited to bring white into her design. I really like that about her gen one look. I don't like polka dots. As you saw in Claude's design, I actually took away the purple from his palette and I'm now adding it to Draculaura's. I wanted their designs to have some kind of cohesion and I thought this would be a good way to bridge the gaps. Otherwise, he would have had too many colors while she would just have pink and I know Draculaura is pink, but purple is close enough that it doesn't feel too sacrilegious. It was really fun drawing her fangs. I wanted them to be really big since in my mind, werewolves and vampires should be able to match ferociousness. And I gave the werewolves entire canine faces. So Drac gets these huge razor sharp fangs and I gave her long pointed nails as well. Something I really do like about her gen three design is her body type. I always loved how short Draculaura was. The height difference between her and the other characters was crazy. <laughs> Even though everybody is still a super skinny hourglass in the original, there's actually a lot more body diversity than you might find in some other fashion focused girls media from the time. However, in the reboot, not only did they keep her as the shortest member of the Boo crew, they also made her a little curvier. Look at her Gen 3 doll compared to Claudine and Frankie's. I love it. I complained about her design in the show, but her dolls are really good. I also like her V-bangs, so I kept those for my design too. Honestly, I feel like I might have even made her too tall, but that kind of tracks with an ongoing issue I have in my art. I also draw legs and feet too big. I'm working on that. <laughs> Yeah, I think she just got a few extra inches than I intended her to. <laughs> Anyways, I mentioned that I added a lot of purple to her outfit, but her skin and hair are still pink. I did, however, change her eyes to be purple. At some point growing up, I read in Vampireology that vampires could have violet eyes. In fact, the author of the book, it's formatted as if it's a journal of a vampire researcher, encounters a woman who lures him in with her mesmerizing violet eyes. Ever since then, in my mind, vampires have purple eyes. I don't know. No. I did not read Twilight or watch the movies. I also like this because as you may have noticed, I gave Claude violet eyes as well. And I love when characters who end up together have some kind of parallel with their eyes. Like how for Musa and Aisha, I gave them the eye color that matches each other's hair. Adding this in since I didn't talk about Draculaura's mom in Gen 3, but she literally appeared in an episode for the first time like two days ago. And I haven't gotten to watch it yet. Bad timing. But in Gen 3, Draculaura's mom is a Taiwanese vampire named Fang Wei. We see Draculaura speaking Mandarin to Gina Fire at the beach, which I think is the first bit of hinting towards her mom, maybe? It seems as though she isn't really based on a particular vampire legend, but was fully created for the show. It makes sense since in the reboot's lore, Draculaura would have been born a vampire, not turned. So both her parents would be monsters too. I think it's an interesting choice and I love learning about the characters' families, so I'm really excited to catch up with the new season. It's been endearing me more to Draculaura, so we'll see. Thus concludes my drawings. I feel like I'm getting a little better at drawing canines, which is good since I have my Roxy redesign coming up. These Monster High redesigns are so fun. I really enjoy doing them. And from what I've had time to watch so far, season two of the reboot is really good. Definitely recommend if you haven't watched it already and sorry about all the spoilers so far from these redesigns. I hope you all enjoyed and I know I changed these characters a lot, so I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say about them in the comments. Until next time, bye!